Thanks for joining us. So glad you are here and part of our family of listeners on the Health Call Live Radio Hour. We have a lot to talk about today. We're going to cover exactly what's going on in the world with uh, Greg Russell from Fort Wayne Custom RX, how coronavirus has affected him. And then we're going to take a look at the items that you probably ought to have in your medicine cabinet, the supplements that can really make a difference in your health. And we'll walk through 10 that he thinks are really significant that you know about. And I want to welcome back Greg Russell from Great Fort to Wayne be Custom here. RX. Always love having you come in. How are you being affected? You're going to reopen and uh, and get back in business Monday. We certainly are. Uh, we've been, of course, offering curbside service, which has actually done pretty well for us. Um, but we're anxious to have patients back in uh, so we can take care of them. Um, we will, of course, uh, limit how many people come in according to the governor's plans, require a face mask. Mm -hmm. um, we ask people to wear face masks. We have to understand we have some of the sickest people in the city coming in, and so we don't want them to pick something up. So, and You really do have a unique patient population. I mean, people come to you because of your specialties in compounding unique medications right. and also also for nutritional counseling, and that's where we're going to focus today. Right. You know, there's a lot of controversy around vitamins and supplements, and you know, the FDA does not regulate them. Correct. So, uh, you and I have talked before about the importance of quality and making sure that you're buying something that's truly going to be effective. You think that a multivitamin still is a good idea? I, I do. I think multivitamins are really important. I think we have a problem getting the proper basic nutrients. You have to understand the RDAs were really made years ago uh, and they've not really overly been updated and they were basically to prevent diseases. So I don't care. I know I'm going to get enough vitamin C that I'm not going to get scurvy. But, you know, what? how much vitamin C do I need, for example, to maintain my optimal health or vitamin A or vitamin D, etc.? Right. Yeah. We've learned a, we've learned a lot about the, the role of vitamins have. and minerals and other things and the role that they play in our body back from the days when yeah, those, as you said, the RDAs were just enough to keep you from having a problem, not necessarily to function at an optimal level. That's right. right. And, and the mitochondria, and this is going to take us all back to high school biology class, the mitochondria are really important component in overall health. Now, they're the little powerhouses that generate all the energy that our body uses, and we've learned a tremendous amount about keeping those little guys healthy. Yeah, and it's very important we keep them healthy. For example, they really are sensitive to, to oxidative stress, and oxidative stress, of course, takes many different forms, and they're also sensitive to aging, and as we age, we lose mitochondria naturally. So, the mitochondria we have, we want to certainly keep them as healthy and optimal as possible. Yeah, and there are a lot of things that we do as part of our day life that really puts that's, them into some right. challenge. So now there are some products on the market that are available to help power the mitochondria. Let's talk about one of those. Sure. So, for example, um, you know, if I was on a desert island, you know, what things would I want to take? And one of the things I would want to do, of course, is, is take an item that is going to just help my whole overall health. And probably nothing can do that on like a multiple vitamin to make sure at least I cover everything. But, you know, there's a million zillion multiple vitamins out there, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you determine which one? And so what I look for is extra antioxidant power, things that are going to help that mitochondria. So some of those ingredients that I look for, I look for things like EGCG in a vitamin. I look for something that has resveratrol. And I know you had uh, Dr. Hoffman on mm -hmm. talking about resveratrol, mm -hmm. and I'm a big, big proponent of resveratrol. Veritrol. Uh, other things I would want to have is alpha lipoic acid, what we call the universal antioxidant. And that we've used for lots of patients that have circulatory issues or diabetes. And we all know prediabetes and diabetes is, is epidemic. And that's the other uh, epidemic that's going on right now. That, mm -hmm. Boy, we should have a show just on that. Uh, things like uh, broccoli seed extract and... Um, Acetylcarnitine, which is incredibly important for the mitochondria. The acetylcarnitine helps provide some of the energy for that. It helps support, support the electric, electron transport chain in the mitochondria, which may, really means it helps support the energy. And then one of my favorites is N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine, or NAC as it's called, helps your body make glutathione. So, you know, this whole uh, COVID uh, epidemic, you know, part of it is the, uh, the toxicities that's occurring, mm -hmm. and we need to have a good, robust defensive system. So, again, these, these multiple vitamins, if you get one that has some of these extra type of, of antioxidants in it, you're going to, that's going to be the best money you spend. So, I'm not going to go shopping for each one of those ingredients you just listed, am no. I? No. 
Nope, I wouldn't. Um, basically, I have a couple products that we recommend in the store, and from several really good manufacturers. Um, but uh, you know, again. As you know, you get on the internet, and the first thing people call me and talk to me on every day, I probably get half a dozen phone calls daily, says, hey, have you heard about Dr. Ying Yang's potion? What do you think about that? And the reality is, as we sit down and we talk about these supplements today, we're trying to, we're trying to do ones that, we're trying to talk about ones that actually have some good science behind them. There's no real, there is no real general secret to great health. It is just keeping your, your basic body supplied with the, with the raw, raw good nutritional products that it needs. And, and that's why I look to you for this kind of information, because I, I know that when I'm talking to you, these are not uh, stories you read on the internet and decided, oh, this looks like a great product. You've done the research. You understand the chemistry and the bio biology behind all this stuff. So, yeah. And, uh, and, you know, here's another fun fact. A lot of patients take multiple vitamins, and they, they ask us whether they should take iron or not. In general, I recommend you don't take iron in a multiple vitamin unless you have anemia because you're taking these multiple vitamins that are antioxidants and then you give a prooxidant like iron. Now, if you have a condition where you have anemia, where you have where you need the iron, let's say you're pregnant or you're you you have anemia of some nature, mm -hmm. then we will recommend an iron or if you have heavy menstrual cycles. But usually we recommend that's uh, when you talk to your physician to decide if you need that. So I want to circle back to a second to that mitochondrial support. So you listed all those items there, the broccoli seed extract and et cetera. And the product that you have in the store, uh, how do I ask for that? What do I do? Yeah. How well, do I know I need that? Actually, my favorite, we actually had a product formulated for us by a manufacturer called Orthomolecular, and they make a lot of our customized vitamins, and it's actually the same as their product called Mitocor. Uh, we call ours MitoCharge. So uh, what we like about it is we, we discount our product 10 or 15 uh, percent every day. So we, we can offer it. Um, we mass we mass make it or right. have it made for us, excuse me. And it's it's the vitamin I take. It's the one that I recommend a lot for fibromyalgia patients. Uh, Etc. I mean, we like I said, we have so many sick patients. That's kind of our foundational vitamin. Okay, so there you go. If you're just kind of suffering that lack of energy and lack of get up and go, right? You, that might be the place to start. Right, Greg. We're going to jump through these pretty quick. We've got some other things I know you want to hit. B complex vitamins. What do we need to know about that? Okay. In addition to an MVI, a multiple vitamin, a lot of times that won't have enough of the B vitamins that you need, and so you want a nice B vitamin that's got what we call the activated Bs. And the reason for that is um, we're all under genetic uh, control as far as what our body's ability are to utilize those vitamins. And if they're already broken down and they're active vitamins, they work better. Better. Especially young women, they get put on birth control pills. Something that they don't often think about is, you know, as they're going to do a family plan, they're going to want to take folic acid at some point. Folic acid is really important for a pregnancy. So why not start taking it when you're taking the birth control pill? Because what's going to happen, they're going to go off the pill. They're going to want to become pregnant fairly quickly. Well, we know those birth control pills also have a tendency to deplete folic acid. So we want to make sure we, we keep them healthy and have a healthy pregnancy. B vitamin shortages can show up in a lot of different ways. I mean, everything from symptoms that emulate dementia through to just right. lack of energy. It's what right. Homocysteine levels can go up, and yeah. there's correlation with homocysteine and Alzheimer's disease, as well as cardiovascular disease. COVID-19 brought us around to thinking about vitamin D, mm -hmm. and uh, so there have been a number of studies that show that adequate vitamin D levels are preventative against respiratory infections across the board. Certainly. Yeah. And it's funny how vitamin D thinking has changed over the years. And a lot of people are not going to be able to get vitamin D from the milk they drink, because a lot of us are drinking less milk these days. Mm -hmm. And there aren't that many foods that contain vitamin D. So supplement seems to be important. Right. Well, especially up here, it seems like in the northern hemisphere here, we're, we don't get enough adequate sunshine, although I'm planning on getting some this afternoon myself. Good for you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, we, we just live in a climate where we're not going to get enough sunshine. And so, again, trying to get those vitamin D levels up into that 50 to 80 range, uh, it seems like that makes good sense for our immune system. And I think there's a definite correlation to that. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking during the break, I'm taking 4,000 units a day and I just am at 50. And mm -hmm. and what's the RDA? Is it 1,000? It's 1,000, yeah, for the yeah. most part. So, so, again, the stats and the science has moved beyond from what we we know to be true. Right. Uh, magnesium and calcium. Yeah. We've, I, you don't hear a lot about this. No, and magnesium is kind of the, the step 
child that doesn't get any attention. Uh, calcium is important for bones. We all know that. We like to give magnesium in addition to it. Um, magnesium is used in so many different chemical reactions in your body, and it's been estimated that somewhere between three out of four Americans, 75% of us are de deficient in magnesium. If you have high blood sugars, you run high blood sugars, or you're athletic, you know, you're going to use a lot of magnesium up. And uh, we know that it's important. It can help lower blood pressure. It just does so many different things. Again, caution, we have to use, be careful with magnesium with, with patients that have kidney issues. Yeah, and... Are there medications that are going to affect magnesium? Yeah, especially the diuretics have a, have a tendency to, to eliminate magnesium out too. But there are other medications that are going to going to drive your metabolic metabolism, and so as a result, you're going to need more magnesium. And moving on to probiotics, we've talked about probiotics before and, and how important they are, pro and prebiotics. Right. They're incredibly important for the immune system, especially in nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because we know that the digestive tract plays a huge role in your immune system. And, you know, quality is so important. But, you know, some people, um, you know, we now know that there's certain researches. For example, there's a certain strain of a lactobacillus called a ruteri, ruteri, excuse me, that actually helps uh, support cholesterol. Uh, levels helps lower mm. cholesterol levels. So probiotics are really important. We're learning so much science about probiotics, but the important thing I think listeners need to know is a probiotics very important for the health, and to know ad adequately how to take a probiotic. Yeah, and the right one, I, right. as you said. Not only that, is it processed correctly? If it's been sitting on the store shelf forever, you know, it's yeah, they're they're live live bacteria and they're dying. And if you take it with tap water, yeah, you have to be careful with with chlorinated water. If you really think about it, what's chlorine do? It kills bacteria. So now we're taking a probiotic. You spent 40 bucks on a probiotic. It kills, it kills your bacteria and it's not working. Heather, our producer is checking in. There is a question coming in by text. Yes, it says, Dr. Greg, does 50 milligrams of DHEA help my sugar metabolism? In other words, if I'm a 6.0 with my A1C, would this help lower it? Thanks, Richard. Ah, good question. Um, so DHEA is a hormone that's actually made in the adrenals, um, and it's it's important because it's also uh, part of the uh, testosterone estrogen cycle in that in that in that cascade. So DHEA, as men age, we tend to have a lower testosterone, and if DHEA levels are also low, and that many different reasons can cause that. One could be a lot of stress, um, but aging is the is the number one cause the DHEA drop. As DHEA levels drop and testosterone levels drop, then there is a correlation to increase blood sugars. So, for example, it's, it's widely known that most patients with diabetes, most males that have diabetes, have low testosterone levels. Right. So, the answer to that question is it probably does support good blood sugar control. Whether it will, with, whether it will by itself lower your blood sugar is is difficult to determine. A lot of factors will go into it. If you're low on DHEA and low on testosterone, you tend to have a lot more visceral fat uh, in your body. And of course, being obese will increase your blood sugars. Yeah, man. And the inflammation that comes along with diabetes and insulin levels is just so damaging all yeah, over your body. Great question. Yeah, it is a good question. Uh, Omega-3 fatty acids. You know, we've heard about fish oil and there are a lot of studies that say, uh, oh, come on, it doesn't really have the effect on heart disease that we thought it did. And then there are others that are saying, no, it's fantastic for so many different conditions. Where, where yeah. are you coming down well, on Well, I'll tell you, with, again, this kind of feeds right off that last question. Question. Diabetes is epidemic, or pre-diabetes is epidemic. That is a disease where we see elevated triglycerides. We know omega-3s lower triglycerides. We have prescription omega-3s that lower triglycerides. So um, we know it's anti-inflammatory. We know that omega-3 is, is you get it not only from supplements, but you get it from your diet. A healthy diet with good omega-3s, which fish is, you know, fish, lean red meats, or absence of red meats, are all going to help that inflammatory cascade. I love omega-3. That's definitely one I would take with me on my desert island. Good deal. Uh, we can come back and talk about omega-3 on another program in greater detail. There's a mm -hmm. lot to get into on that one. CoQ10 is another one of those things that's advertised like crazy. You hear about it a 
lot? Is it significant? It is significant. It's difficult to make, and it doesn't absorb real well. So again, quality manufacturers are really important with this. Coenzyme Q10, again, is one of those things that's important for the mitochondria. So I use this uh, constantly. I usually recommend it for anybody over age 40. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to help lower blood pressure. I think it helps support those mitochondria. If you're on a statin drug, you should probably should be, well, you should be taking coenzyme Q10. Statin drugs block the production of coenzyme Q10. And then uh, zinc, I think, is important. We're just going to pass that one over kind of quickly. Healder here, elderberry, beta-glucan, IgG, colostrum. What is all of that? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we can't, we can't go to our desert island without trying to protect our immune system. So we're taking those probiotics. But what happens when I, when I need that extra protection? So, again, you know, um, beta-glucan, we talked about that as that's getting your immune system ready. It's basically the trigger. You know, you're priming the trigger. And then the elderberry has a lot of lot of data about how it helps respiratory uh, illnesses. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Sambacol is one of my favorite syrups. I keep it in my, in my medicine chest. So, you know, if I'm starting to feel a cold coming on, I want to get on that right away. And then, of course, the last product, the uh, IgG, is a colostrum product. And, and that's something, you know, that kind of indirectly helps my immune system and the fact that it's going to work in my gut and kind of help clean that gut up so that um, it just helps prevent that whole in initiation of of the immune system cascade. And curcumin is uh, just an incredible anti-inflammatory. Yes, I take it. It's I, I take a lot of it because I have a, you know, as I've ta I've shared in the past, I have knee injuries and I've had a back injury, so you know I don't take pain medications. So I take curcumin. It's a fabulous antioxidant. Works on the nerve two system. It just has so many different mechanisms. Again, another product that's difficult to make. Uh, it, it has to be made in an absorbable form. So there are certain manufacturers that do better mm -hmm. jobs than other ones, um, but it's a very great product. Caution with that drug. We're kind of careful if patients are on anticoagulant drugs. So uh, you. You can tell that Greg has a tremendous amount of knowledge about all of this, and that's available to me as a nutritional consulting situation. So mm -hmm. you, you don't think about pharmacists as counseling you on these things, but that's part of your role. That's right. We we have a variety of consulting services, um, and uh, you can set an appointment uh, at our pharmacy. Uh, what we get, what we do is we collect your information about what medications and what uh, nutritional products you are or not taking. We try to. Put Put together a plan with you. We'll sit down with you. Of course, during the COVID, we're, we're trying right. to figure out how we're going to do telepharmacy. Right. Uh, we can do it over the phone or, or Zoom. But these are things that we we do do, um, and we have a staff that we train to do those things. And um, So tell me how that's going to yeah. go. We meet. I tell you all about my meds, how lousy I'm feeling in whatever area, mm -hmm. and you're going to then come through and give me a written plan for all of this? Exactly. That's exactly what we do. So, you know, the goal is to, to try to get as much information as we can in the interview uh, we may sit down and we may say hey we'll have to get you know type this up and and get it back with you and of course if we can get that information early on sure. it helps in the console but we we basically have a great 170 question uh, consult form that we use that we'll ask you lots of questions and we give that to you early then when you fill that information back to us we have it we can analyze it and kind of go from there so if you are serious about trying to feel your best and live as healthy as you can I do hope that you'll reach out to Greg Russell pharmacist and clinical nutritionist at the Fort Wayne Custom Rx on DuPont Road. You'll find them online at fwcustomrx.com. Greg, thanks so much. Thank you.